Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers alcohol possession, obstruction, and excessive force, and is brought to us by 6ABC Philadelphia's channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On May 25, 2018, 20-year-old Philadelphia resident Emily Weinman was sitting with a friend on a beach in Wildwood, New Jersey, when she was approached by Officer Thomas Cannon and Officer Robert Jordan of the Wildwood Police Department. Both officers were Class II Special Law Enforcement officers, which, as the Wildwood PD's website explains, are temporary officers brought on to assist with the tourist population during the summer months, with most special law enforcement officers being college students earning credits towards their degree through the program. After approaching Ms. Weinman, Officer Cannon and Officer Jordan began to question her about some unopened bottles of alcoholic twisted teas that were sitting beside a cooler near where Ms. Weinman and her friend were sitting. So your parents? My aunt. Oh, your aunt? Where's your aunt at? On her way. She's coming back. So she's coming back? Cool. Do me a favor. Take a deep breath and blow into that, all right? All right, do me a favor. Try one more time. Deep breath. Don't put it, don't go too so far in. Is there a standard problem? Mind your business. Alright, where's your hand at? You have her phone number? Wait. How old are you? I know that didn't come up positive. I didn't take a drink of anything, so. Alright, where's. Yo, guys. Even if it's your aunt, she is of age. Is she of age? Yeah, how old is she? Like 40. Like 40? Alright, go grab her real quick. We're gonna have them pour that all out. How are you gonna let us go? We didn't even drink alcohol. Right. Well, where's your aunt at? You're allowed, you're, allowed to carry, you're allowed to carry alcohol. You're allowed to carry alcohol. That's interesting. You're under eight. You are. You're not allowed to drink it. And we did not open drink display it. on the beach. What? It's possession open consumption. Display. It's not open. Open display means you. What do you mean? That doesn't mean You can mean see anything. it, yes. Okay, you can see it, uh, and we're not drinking. 5043. Show me how the LLS calendar in the beach. The officers inform Ms. Weinman that it is illegal for underage individuals to have alcohol in their possession and in public view on the beach, even if they do not consume them. And this is an accurate statement of the applicable law. Section 2C33-15 of the New Jersey Statutes makes it a non-criminal disorderly person's offense for a person under the age of 21 to knowingly possess without legal authority or knowingly consume an alcoholic beverage in a public place. Similarly, Section 4-1.2 of Wildwood Municipal Code states that, quote, it shall be a violation of this section for any person to commit any of the following acts on the beach, boardwalk, or boardwalk approaches during the months of May, June, July, August, and September of each year. Openly display, expose, or dispense, or offer to dispense, or to consume any beer, wine, whiskey, or other alcoholic beverages. However, it is possible that a court would find that Ms. Weinman did not have the twisted teas in her possession, as they allegedly belonged to her aunt, and were simply nearby the location where she was sitting. In general, an individual can be charged with a possession-based offense if they have actual or quote-unquote constructive possession of an object. As the Supreme Court of New Jersey explained in the 2006 case of State v. Morrison, quote, A person has actual possession of an object when he has physical or manual control of it. Alternatively, a person has constructive possession of an object when, although he lacks physical or manual control, the circumstances permit a reasonable inference that he has knowledge of its presence and intends and has the capacity to exercise physical control or dominion over it during a span of time. If the Twisted Tees did belong to Miss Weinman's aunt, and Ms. Weinman had not carried them or otherwise exerted physical control over them and did not intend to do so, Ms. Weinman would have a strong argument that she did not possess any alcoholic beverages. However, a court would likely agree that the officers at least had the reasonable suspicion necessary to detain Ms. Weinman, both to investigate whether she was underage and in possession of alcohol, and because the beverages were openly displayed in violation of the local ordinance. So how about that? Can you lock me up for a little water over there? Yeah, you're not cooperating. Yeah. Your aunt didn't disrespect you. I didn't do anything to get written up, did now I? Now you're closing the scene. Now you're closing the scene. I'm not you want it? The scene. All right. I'll give you one more chance to give me your last name. Just be cooperative. Okay. You can't lock me up. I didn't 
to disrespect you. Okay. And you're and I you don't need to put my name down either because I didn't respect you. I don't do anything to you. You're mad because we thought we were drinking. I'll give you one. Okay. First of all, you you're in possession. Where, where's your aunt at then? She's on her way. Okay, what's your last name? You could name? wait here. That's like you wasted your time coming over here. You could wait here for her. Okay, what's your last name? You don't need my last name. The officers ask Ms. Weinman to provide her last name and threaten to arrest her for obstruction if she does not comply with their demands. But she refuses and claims that she has not broken any laws. Although New Jersey does not have a stop and identify statute that would require Ms. Weinman to identify herself to the officers, Section 2C33-15 of the New Jersey Statutes, which is the underage alcohol possession statute we discussed earlier, does subject underage individuals who possess or consume alcohol to certain penalties, including a written warning issued by a law enforcement officer to the underage person for first-time offenders. Now, quoting, The written warning shall include the person's name, address, and date of birth, and a copy of the warning containing this information, plus a sworn statement that includes a description of the relevant facts and circumstances that support the officer's determination that the person committed the violation. Therefore, it is possible that the officers were attempting to identify Ms. Weinman in order to write this written warning, or check her record for previous violations, which would subject her to additional penalties. However, Ms. Weinman Weinman likely could not be found guilty of obstruction for simply refusing to provide her last name. According to Section 2C29-1 of the New Jersey Statutes, quote, A person commits an offense if he purposely obstructs, impairs, or perverts the administration of law or other governmental function, or prevents or attempts to prevent a public servant from lawfully performing an official function by means of flight, intimidation, force, violence, or physical interference or obstacle, or by means of any independently unlawful act. As the Appellate Division of the Superior Court of New Jersey explained in the 2005 case of State v. Camilo, quote, Simply obstructing, impairing, or perverting the administration of law or the governmental function is no longer a statutory violation. The obstruction must be carried out in a manner described in the statute. The court then concluded that an individual could not be convicted of obstruction for refusing to provide his name, date of birth, and social security number because, quote, he did not physically interfere with Trooper Dykeman. What he did was refuse to provide information the trooper required to complete his incident report. While defendant's actions may, in fact, have in a real sense obstructed the trooper from preparing his report, that conduct in the absence of physical interference is not a violation. For this reason, it is highly unlikely that Ms. Weinman could be convicted of obstruction for refusing to give her name. Said I'm done with you. Do you have cops on you? No, man. Get over here. Don't talk to me. Yo. Don't talk to me. All right. You're about to get dropped. Yo, don't talk to me, man. You don't. Get over here. What are you doing? Don't. After briefly chasing Ms. Weinman a short distance across the beach, she turns around and shoves the officer before being thrown to the ground. Ms. Weinman immediately begins resisting the officers and calling out to her nearby friends. At some point during the scuffle, one of the officers punches Ms. Weinman in the head several times before managing to restrain her. I wasn't drinking anything! Just smell it! Get off of me! Don't stare unless you're gonna f out! You need to get the f you fight piece of trash! What the f do? Oh yeah, now we got these young cops who know how to f treat people! Come on and talk to the captain as if he will get. Too. Good, I hope you do. Yeah, well, dirt ball. No, who are you? Later. Ms. Weinman's boyfriend criticizes the officers for their decision to punch Ms. Weinman during the confrontation. It is undisputed that officers are entitled to use reasonable force to execute an arrest or detention. As the Supreme Court explained in the 1989 case of Graham v. Connor, quote, our Fourth Amendment jurisprudence has long recognized that the right to make an arrest or investigatory stop necessarily carries with it the right to use some degree of physical coercion or threat thereof to effect it. 
According to the National Institute of Justice, most law enforcement agencies have policies that recognize a, quote, use of force continuum and, quote, describe an escalating series of actions an officer may take to resolve a situation. This continuum generally has many levels, and officers are instructed to respond with a level of force appropriate to the situation at hand, acknowledging that the officer may move from one part of the continuum to another in a matter of seconds. In some situations, a closed fist punch is considered an appropriate method of control or restraint and a constitutional use of force. A closed fist punch is a type of quote-unquote empty hand control, where officers use bodily force alone to restrain a citizen, and is a mid-level escalation in a typical use of force continuum. Kicks and punches are known as quote-unquote hard techniques, and are considered a step above the soft empty hand techniques, such as grabs, holds, and joint locks on the use of force continuum. It is difficult to predict whether a court would conclude that punching Ms. Weinman was an excessive use of force, or if it was constitutionally valid, as the legal analysis is highly circumstantial. For instance, in the 2009 case of Husbands v. City of New York, the Second Circuit held that, as a matter of law, a single punch to the torso of an individual who was resisting being put in handcuffs did not rise to the level of excessive force. But in the 2013 case of Martinez v. Snyder, the District Court of Delaware held that a reasonable jury could conclude that punching an individual in the face hard enough to fracture her orbital bone was excessive and not reasonable under the circumstances. The court explained that while the suspect did resist arrest, quote, It is unclear whether it was necessary for Williams to punch her in the face in order to effect arrest. A jury could find that plaintiff, a female of small size, did not appear to be intoxicated, possessed no weapons, was held down on the ground by both defendants, had only one hand free, and did not seem to be trying to seriously injure defendants. Because whether a punch constitutes excessive force substantially depends on a jury or judge's discretion and interpretation of the facts, it is possible that the decision could go either way. How old is she? Punched her in her face, though. Yeah, well, she tried kicking us, so that's it. Yeah, she did. I go to yeah, it's fine. I go to stop her for LO for Andre's drinking. She said she's 20. She had twisted tees. She wouldn't give me her last name. So I said, hey, if you're not going to give me your information, you're going to be locked up. She tried walking away from me. But she tried walking away from me. I tried grabbing her. She tried kicking at us. So we slammed her on the ground. She kicked him. And then I just thought I hit her a couple times. And then I put her in cuffs locked her up. Ms. Weinman was placed under arrest and transported to the Wildwood Police Station. She was charged with disorderly conduct, resisting arrest, and obstruction all of which are disorderly persons' offenses and not crimes. A bystander on the beach had filmed part of the confrontation and shared the video on social media, leading to an international outcry about the officer's conduct. After the footage went viral, Ms. Weinman was charged with several criminal offenses, including two counts of aggravated assault, throwing bodily fluids in the third degree, resisting arrest in the third degree, and hindering apprehension in the fourth degree. However, Ms. Weinman eventually pled guilty to a single charge of disorderly conduct, which is a petty disorderly person offense. The Cape May County Prosecutor's Office conducted an investigation into whether officers Cannon and Jordan used excessive force when arresting Ms. Weinman, and determined that there was insufficient evidence to warrant criminal charges. However, on October 14, 2019, Ms. Weinman filed a federal lawsuit against the officers and the city of Wildwood, and in November of 2020, the city agreed to pay a $325,000 settlement. Overall, the Wildwood Special Law Enforcement Officers get an F. Because although the officers likely had reasonable suspicion to investigate Ms. Weinman, they baselessly threatened to arrest her for obstruction, failed to employ any measure of de-escalation, and used a disproportionate degree of force to subdue Ms. Weinman. The Wildwood Special Officers were well within their authority to approach Ms. Weinman and detain her under the suspicion that she was openly displaying alcohol on the beach. However, considering that New Jersey is not a stop-and-identify state, Ms. Weinman was not obligated to present her identification until the officers acquired probable cause and arrested or cited her. Instead of waiting a reasonable amount of time to investigate whether Ms. Weinman's claims were true, the officer decided to arrest her for refusing to provide her last name. It is clear from the body camera footage that the primary arresting officer was frustrated with Ms. Weinman's attitude, and this is likely why the officer failed to consider the disparity of force that existed between himself and Ms. Weinman. Standard protocol in any use of force situation generally considers the physical characteristics of the suspect, such as age, size, gender, and apparent strength and it is clear that the two special officers had a distinct physical advantage over Ms. Weinman. This is likely why the city of Wildwood agreed to the settlement. Ms. Weinman also gets an F. 
for failing to invoke her right to remain silent, refusing to comply with the lawful orders of the officers, and for physically attacking one of the officers as he approached her. As mentioned on many episodes of ATA, resisting an arrest is never a good idea, regardless of the circumstances, and it is much more productive to fight your battle for justice in the courtroom, not on the street. The body camera footage clearly shows Ms. Weinman shoving the officer just before she's taken down, and footage from other bystanders shows her continuing to resist while on the ground. At no point during the interaction did Ms. Weinman invoke her right to remain silent, and she refused to obey several lawful commands while maintaining a hostile and condescending demeanor. All that said, nothing that Ms. Weinman did justified the level of force that the Wildwood Special Officers employed. While I do commend Ms. Weinman for following up this interaction with the proper legal action, I would caution other citizens in a similar situation to remain as calm and compliant as possible while verbally invoking the right to remain silent. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.